If you're watching The Gilded Age on HBO, you likely saw the new featured character, Sarah Garnett, the teacher who is trying to get everyone on board to help save spaces for colored students and colored teachers. Well, whether or not you're watching the new show, stay tuned for this episode of Ty's Hot Miss History if you like the real stories of people from the past because she was a real person who was one of the first black school principals and for an integrated school at that. She was born to parents who valued education. She married twice. She founded and participated in a number of organizations that promoted integration, voting rights, and women's rights. And one well-known Gilded Age society lady chose to shut her out of the women's suffrage movement in her city. I'll tell you about that and what Sarah Thompson did on one frightening day during the Civil War draft riots of 1863. She was a real hero. Let's get into it. But first, if you like these videos about the most scandalous people from yesteryear who make Ty's Hot Miss History a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload content. And please hit that thumbs up to support this video for free. Thank you. Now on to why you are here. Sarah Jane Smith Thompson Garnett was born Sarah Jane Smith in 1831 in Brooklyn, New York. Her parents were Sylvanus Smith and Annie Springstead Smith. They were affluent farmers and thank goodness they were well off because they had 11 children to support and they made sure that all 11 of their children became well educated. By the time that Sarah was 14, she was a classroom monitor, well on her way to becoming a teacher. A classroom monitor had almost all the duties as a teacher, they just weren't paid for their work. They came up with class curriculum, taught students, graded them, promoted them to the next grade level, and even oversaw other monitors. You can think of being a monitor as an apprenticeship program for teachers. She eventually went on to become a teacher in Brooklyn and then a principal of an integrated school in Manhattan. Sarah is known for being the first black woman principal in New York City's public school system, but my research shows that she might not have been the first, but was definitely among the first. And quick side note, since we're talking about firsts, Sarah's sister, Susan McKinney, went on to become Dr. Susan McKinney, the first black woman to become a licensed doctor in the state of New York, the third in the country. Sarah Jane Smith was also an active member of a lot of women's organizations, and she even founded one of her own, the Equal Suffrage League, which was a suffrage club for black women. She didn't start this club in an effort to be divisive when it came to white women who were fighting for the same goal. As a matter of fact, Sarah was in a number of racially integrated clubs and clubs that fought for racial integration and equality. Sarah founded a black women's suffrage organization because many white women suffragettes in her time did not want to work hand in hand with her and other black women to achieve voting rights for women. One of those well-known white women was Alva Belmont, AKA Alva Vanderbilt. Sarah founded her suffrage organization in 1902 in Brooklyn. She and the black women in the Equal Suffrage League at times did work together with New York's white suffrage leagues. But the blatant discrimination that she faced from some of the white suffragists limited the amount of work that they could do together. When Sarah met with Alva Vanderbilt, Alva's proposal was that Sarah lose her own organization and just join Alva's as a colored branch. Alva's suffrage group was called the Political Equality Association. She wanted Sarah to bring in her other black women members of the Equal Suffrage League, but have them to call themselves the Harlem Club of the Political Equality Association. You see, just adding on a prefix to Alva's club name, even though Sarah and many of the women in her group lived in upscale homes in Brooklyn, not Harlem. Needless to say, Sarah did not join forces with Alva or the likes of her, but she did go on to work with other white organizations that took her seriously. As a matter of fact, Sarah Smith invited Anne Cobden Sanderson all the way from England to speak at a suffrage event in 1907. Anne was one of the biggest names in the suffrage movement in England, and she took up Sarah on her invitation, becoming the first British suffrage leader to publicly speak in the United States. And a few years after Anne Cobden visited the United States at Sarah Smith's request, Sarah and her sister, Dr. McKinney, went to visit London for the first ever Universal Racist Congress. 
an event in which people from 22 nations of various racial and ethnic backgrounds made a global effort to promote racial harmony. Their discussions were held based on papers that were submitted, and Dr. McKinney submitted one of those papers. Sarah returned to New York and reported on the awe-inspiring progress that she witnessed. She was definitely taken much more seriously by the white British suffragettes than the wealthy white women in her own city. Sarah Jane married twice. Her second husband was well-respected abolitionist Henry Highland Garnett. They got married in 1879, then separated after only one year. After their separation, he went to Liberia so that he could spend his last days with his only surviving child of three from his first marriage. He was still married to Sarah Jane when he died in Liberia in 1882. Sarah Jane's first husband was a minister named James Thompson. She married him in the 1850s and he died in the late 1860s. It was while she was married to him that she experienced one of the most frightening days of her life, but she exhibited bravery every step of the way. The event came to be known as the Civil War Draft Riots of 1863. It started on July 13th in New York City, lasting a few days, during which 500 people were killed. When news of the riot spread to Boston, Boston also followed suit and had a similar outbreak of violence. Sarah was at school teaching when the mayhem started. An anti-union mob started terrorizing the streets. But to be clear, white people were casualties of their violence too, not just black people. To make a very long story short, just before a number of names were to be read for a draft round, this mob made up of working class men started attacking anyone who would stop them. So their first victims were policemen and firemen who were also white men like them. They cut down telegraph poles and wires as they made their way along the city streets, destroying means of communication so that no one could call for aid. They did target some buildings that were known to be occupied by black people. For example, the Colored Orphan Asylum. They burned it to the ground. Then they approached the school where Sarah Jane Smith Thompson was teaching in Manhattan. She and her staff were somehow able to keep their doors barricaded, stopping them from entering their school. And then the mob moved on. Even though the violence went on through the night and into the next day, Sarah bravely walked her students home to safety in Manhattan. And lastly, at the end of the night, was able to walk herself home to Brooklyn. Now, I mentioned her first husband after her second husband for a reason. I wanted to remember to leave you with this, just in case you wanted to learn a little bit more about Sarah Jane Smith Thompson Garnett, especially about this particular incident. You will likely need to look up the name Sarah Jane Tompkins. For some reason, her first husband's name was often erroneously written as Tompkins instead of Thompson. Today, a school stands as part of her lasting legacy. In 2019, Brooklyn's PS9 in Prospect Heights was renamed the Sarah Smith Garnett School in honor of her legacy as an educator, suffragist, and racial equality advocate. I created this video because I wanted to tell you more of Sarah Garnett's story after seeing her portrayed on The Gilded Age. On the show, she is fighting for black students and teachers at a time when her school board was saying that black students and teachers alike were inferior based on race. Well, a group of people who were partially black attempted to do the same thing to people who were fully black, and they existed in the same time in history as Sarah Garnett. They were called the Blue Vein Society. You can see my video about their story here. I will leave a link to it in the description box. My sources for this story are National Park Service, Times Union Archives 1863, Museum City of New York, The Buffalo Times Archives 1905 and 1911, The Bowery Boys, The New York Times Archives 1910, and The Maitland Weekly Mercury Archives 1911. This video has been brought to you by me. Well, my Patreon is a sponsor for this video. If you like these dirty scandals on my channel, then you'll love my Patreon, Ty's Too Hot Hot Mess History. It has all of the stuff that I can't talk about or show here because it's just too hot, too violent, too sexual, too graphic, too much. Come and join us there for the hot 
Hot Mess History. The link is in the description box.